there was a time when the only way of cooling venue was air and ice. People used to build their houses in such a way that would provide a proper circulation of air. They used to build special ice houses to store the ice harvested from lakes and rivers in winter season. But the problem is, air is not much effective and ice is not available everywhere. And that's why it had to be transported from one place to another place. But this is not an easy task. Ice can easily melt if the temperature goes above 0 degrees Celsius. And that's why a lot of care needed to be taken while transporting it. And this made the refrigeration a very expensive thing. But fortunately, understanding of thermodynamics, the science that deals with it, opened new doors of refrigeration. Today, we have so many methods that can be used for refrigeration, such as vapor compression system, vapor absorption system, thermoelectric refrigeration, magnetic refrigeration, vortex tube, solar refrigeration, and many more. One of the most common methods that we use is the vapor compression system. It's the same method that we utilize in air conditioners and refrigerators. It works on a simple principle that when a gas expands, its temperature drops. For example, if you try to feel the air coming from a balloon and tire, you would feel that this air is a bit colder than the surrounding air. The reason behind this is that the air inside the balloon and tire is at a bit higher pressure compared to outside air. And that's why this air comes out through the narrow opening of balloon and tire and expands into the atmosphere. When it expands, its pressure drops, which results in dramatic decrease in the temperature, which creates cooling. So, we need a pressure difference to create a cooling effect by this method. We have to either decrease the pressure or increase the pressure. The normal pressure of air surrounding us is 1 bar. If we decrease the pressure, it would create a negative pressure and there is a limit how much vacuum we can create. But there is no such problem with increasing the pressure. And that's why the second option is preferred. But how do we increase the pressure? We cannot inflate the balloon again and again. This is neither practical nor effective. That's why we use a special device called compressor. It's the same device that we see on the back side of the refrigerator. A simple compressor consists of a hollow cylinder and a piston assembly. It sucks the air from outside, piston moves up and down and compresses it and increases the pressure. So now we have air at high pressure. So should we expand and cool it now? Well we can do that but this is not the right time because this won't be much effective. Actually the problem is when we compress and increase the pressure of air or any gas, its temperature also increases and the increase in temperature is so huge that we cannot neglect it. For example, suppose we have air at 1 bar pressure and 27 degrees Celsius. If we compress and increase the pressure up to 5 times, can you imagine what will be the final temperature? The final temperature will be 280 degrees Celsius. It means this air is 10 times hotter than the original air. If we expand this hot air, the final temperature will be just 27 degrees Celsius, which is same as before. So, we achieved nothing. So, what should we do now? We know that heat always flows from higher temperature to the lower temperature. If the walls of this compressor are conducting, then this hot air will dissipate heat through these walls. And it will keep doing that until its temperature becomes equal to the surrounding temperature. But achieving this thermal equilibrium will take a long time because the surface area of the compressor is very low. And we know that heat transfer directly proportional to the surface area. The larger the surface area, the faster we are cooling. So instead of cooling this air inside the compressor, we use a long tube made of copper or some other heat conducting material. This tube has much larger surface area compared to compressor and that's why it provides faster cooling. You might have seen these tubes on the back side of the refrigerator. This coil tube is called condenser. The hot air enters the tube from one side and when it moves inside the coil, it displays heat through these walls and its temperature drop. At the end of this tube, we have low temperature and high pressure air. We can expand and cool it now. The temperature of air is 27 degrees Celsius and its pressure is 5 bar. If we expand it into atmosphere, then its final temperature would be minus 80 degrees Celsius. Air is not toxic and cheaply wearable. That's why it's used in aircraft air conditioning system. But there is one problem with air, its heat absorbing quality is very low and that's why the cooling effect achieved is very low compared to the power supplied at the compressor. So we use some other substances such as ammonia, chlorofluorocarbon and many more called refrigerants. Their heat absorbing quality is very high compared to air. That's why they require low energy, low power and provide a better cooling. But these refrigerants are toxic and cannot be expanded into the air or directly on the food items. That's why we use an expansion device such as an expansion valve or a capillary tube which has much smaller diameter compared to condenser. After expansion, 
this temperature drops dramatically and this low temperature refrigerant is sent into a tube. This tube is called evaporator which is fitted inside the refrigerator. This evaporator tube works similarly to the condenser. The low temperature refrigerant absorbs heat from its surrounding and lowers the temperature. After absorbing heat, this refrigerant is sent into the compressor to complete the cycle. Now we can compress and expand the same refrigerant again and again.